Thank you very much for being here this morning. My name is Sandeep Prasada, I'm the Executive Director of Action Canada for Sexual Health and Rights. Action Canada for Sexual Health and Rights is here in Edmonton to say to our Ministers of Health, time is up. When we were here in July for the Council of the Federation, we called on all provinces and territories to ensure that access to essential medical services doesn't depend on a person's postal code or income bracket. We called a defining moment in reproductive rights in Canada, where we've been given an opportunity to address poor access to abortion services in our country and the historical inequalities this perpetuates and exacerbates. And we called on governments to commit by this meeting to universal cost coverage of Mifigamizo, the gold standard of medical abortion, in order to dramatically improve access to abortion in this country. While a number of provinces and territories have responded positively to this challenge, we are now back in Edmonton to express our concern that we are currently seeing the emergence of two-tiered access to a medical service all people in Canada are entitled to. The six holdout jurisdictions in Canada, British Columbia, the Yukon, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, PEI, and Newfoundland must immediately commit to cost coverage to avoid violating the Canada Health Act and creating two-tiered access to healthcare in Canada. This is a problem not only for reproductive health and rights, but for all of those who believe in universal health care in Canada. And this is why we are pleased to be joined today at this press conference by leaders in key health professions. Right now, a person in Ontario or Alberta who needs access to a medical abortion will be able to do so free of charge and as more healthcare providers incorporate it into their practice, ideally without having to travel if there are in rural or remote areas. Comparatively, if someone in these holdout provinces and territory needs a medical abortion, they would have to pay the full price if they can afford it, or travel, again, if they can afford those costs, likely hundreds of kilometers to access a surgical abortion, of which there are far too few service provision points in their country and too poorly distributed. This is not a choice, and this lack of choice, 30 years post-decriminalization, is unacceptable. What is needed from our political leaders is the courage and the foresight to correct the course and take the necessary steps to address this historical inequality. It has gone on far too long. We are hopeful. We are also here to make it clear that cost coverage is a crucial first step to address long-standing discrepancies in abortion access across Canada, but it is not on its own enough. Restrictive policies uh, that govern abortion access or the handling of mifigamizo can still make, it, uh, make access to it difficult. And we wish for all provinces and territories present at this meeting to examine their own records when it comes to access to abortion. Can nurse practitioners prescribe mifigamizo in your province? Do you still need to travel hundreds of kilometers to find a healthcare provider who prescribes it? Can abortions be accessed only in hospitals in your region? Can pharmacies dispense it in your area? We are hopeful that our presence at the health minister's meeting will offer us the opportunity to engage, to directly engage with provincial and territorial leadership about this important issue that impacts their constituents. We will continue to demand that Mithigamizo be available free of charge and at all necessary steps are taken to ensure abortion services are accessible for all people in Canada. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for taking leadership on this really important issue and for having uh, us here today. Uh, my name is Christina Ruka. I'm a practicing pharmacist from Saskatchewan, the neighboring province here. And I'm here on behalf of the Canadian Pharmacists Association, which is the national voice for pharmacists across this country. We strongly believe that access to Mipicaibizo is critical, critical to women's reproductive health. There are many barriers to access. My colleague just spoke about the substantial cost barriers and the absolute patchwork of coverage across this country. Absolutely cannot remain. On the front lines, we're concerned about that there's another important barrier for women, and that is how this drug is dispensed. Currently, only a handful of provinces allow pharmacists 
to dispense directly to the woman. Because of a Health Canada standard, most provinces require that the physician do it, which is inconsistent with how other medications are dispensed. And we've heard from our physicians that it can be a huge disincentive to even prescribe it. Physicians are not equipped to order and dispense medications. So, in addition to calling for full coverage across this country, we hope that Health Canada will remove the requirement as soon as possible. Failing, we're urging that the remaining provinces adjust their regulations to permit pharmacists to dispense directly to their patients. As a woman and as a pharmacist, I have female patients all the time that come to see us. We truly believe that it is the right of women to control their own reproductive health through universal access, regardless of where they may live in this large country. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. My name is Eric Lavoie. I'm the president of the Nurse Practitioner Association of Alberta, and I'm delighted to be here today on behalf of the Canadian Nurses Association. This past July, the Canadian Nurses Association joined force, forces with Action Canada for Sexual Health and Rights at the Council of the Federation's Summer Meeting in Edmonton to call on all pro provincial and territorial governments to improve access to Michigan-Muso for all Canadian women, whether they live in urban or rural areas. We are pleased to join them again today at this very important event. As the president of the Nurse Practitioner Association of Alberta, I am honored to highlight the increasing role that nurse practitioners play in the access to reproductive health services across Canada. In 2017, over 5,000 nurse practitioners are providing comprehensive health care to over 3 million Canadians. Unfortunately, many barriers are preventing nurse practitioners from practicing to their full scope in Canada. For example, we have to ensure that private insurers do their part by covering the costs of Mifigamizo when prescribed by a nurse practitioner across the country. Considering that the United States has recently included nurse practitioners as authorized Mifigamizo prescribers and that both Ontario and the Yukon are already authorizing nurse practitioners to prescribe Mifigamizo, other provinces are still lagging behind in providing better access. It is not equitable, nor is it acceptable, to have a situation where women across Canada have varied access depending on where they live and not on what they need. While the Canadian Nurses Association has been successful in removing a host of restrictions that have been created by Health Canada, much remains to be done to include nurse practitioners in the existing federal framework for Mifigamizo. Currently, many provinces and territories are requesting further clarification from the federal government regarding Mifigamizo, and it's time to make the changes that are required to, to, um, to improve its access. We are working with national researchers, regulators, and nurse practitioner groups to allow greater access to Mifigamizo prescriptions by nurse practitioners under a study protocol to collect and monitor patient outcomes. This will demonstrate to federal, provincial, and territorial governments once again that nurse practitioners are providing safe and quality care to their patients on a daily basis. Such an approach will further support the need to make the urgent and the necessary regulation changes to improve access to comprehensive and productive care. I would like to conclude by calling on the health ministers of the aforementioned provinces to show leadership and provide full access to reproductive health services, which includes approving Mifigamizo. We are fully supportive of Action Canada for Sexual Health and Rights drive to cover all the costs and offer real universal access to all reprodu reprodu reproductive care. Sorry. We believe that every woman in Canada deserves equitable and affordable access to health care. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Pauline Morsbold, and I am a registered nurse, and I'm here today representing the Canadian Health Coalition. The Canadian Health Coalition is a publicly, 
advocacy organization dedicated to the preservation and improvement of public health care in Canada. Our membership is comprised of national organizations representing healthcare workers, nurses, seniors, churches, anti-poverty groups, women's groups, and trade unions, as well as affiliated coalitions in nine provinces and one territory, and the rest we're working on. Based on our goals at the Canadian Health Coalition of improving and enhancing health care in Canada, we are here in support of Action Canada asking for a renewed health accord with appropriate federal funding and a pharmacare strategy to address discrepancies in individuals' access to accessible, acceptable, available, and quality sexual and reproductive health services and information. I guess the best part about going last is I could just say what they said. I totally agree, and I know the Canadian Health Coalition stands in solidarity. We're asking for a national public drug plan, and that would eliminate inequalities in access to drugs, my colleagues have spoken about already, which would lead to positive sexual and reproductive health, health outcomes. It shouldn't matter where you live, how much money you make. If you need access to medications, you should be able to get them. So my final answer is we need a national public drug plan for all people living in Canada. It's time. Thank you again for, uh, for being here. We do have uh, time for questions. I guess, would, would you say this is mostly a political, monetary, or a provider problem? When you think, when you think of it, is it more of a cost thing, more of a health thing, or more of a political viewpoint on why, why this isn't being provided right now? This is a, um, all of those, I would, I would say. And you're right. Fact. Like, is, there <laughs> that, uh, is there something more, uh, you know, higher on the, on the priority list? This, when, when you look at the initial decision by Health Canada uh, approving uh, Mifigeniza for use in Canada, we see, first of all, a long delayed process. We see that coming 30 years after Mifigeniza was approved in other, um, other countries. We, so it's a, it's a story of delays. and. We firmly believe that these delays are because this relates to abortion access, and that is part of the reason why this is being deprioritized. Um, and we are we are taking issue with that, um, and, and, and we are taking issue with the lack of political action on that. It is for us first and foremost uh, not a political issue that requires political leadership to solve. And many many provinces uh, have already committed to to cost coverage. Ontario, uh, New Brunswick, and Alberta have already rolled out the implementation of that. So we see that it is possible, uh, and we're urging all provinces and territories to, to follow suit. Can you speak to the access of, of to Mifigeniza in Alberta? I mean, they're covering the cost of it, but how easy is it to access it? Can you get it from a nurse practitioner? Can you get it from a pharmacist? What's the situation in Alberta? Um, so, so as a nurse practitioner, I can prescribe Mifigeniza. Um, and then uh, they will go to the pharmacist and the pharmacist will fill out the prescription like any other medication. So our regulatory body, CARNA, has um, provided us with that scope of practice. And so this is a, a potential issue. And so I guess from a ranking point of view, it becomes an issue of universal access to healthcare. Right? Um, and so why does a woman in downtown Toronto have access to um, the so when in Somerset DBI she wouldn't? And so that, that's the issue at hand. So Alberta's doing it right? I would say that at this point, I'll really do the job. And can you speak to the, I've read that physicians have to supervise a woman taking it in Ontario. Is that still, does not in effect, is that a problem? No. Okay. Are, the, are physicians though still under the impression that they're supposed to be supervising a woman taking it? No, I can't comment on what physicians know or don't know, but uh, what I can say is that their college would inform them of that. Is that due to medical issues or would that be due to Okay. What what are the medical um, 
I guess you'd say side effects of, of this. Is that an issue? Is that what's uh, is that a roadblock in any way? Go for it. My understanding uh, is that there were uh, limitations um, on, um, on on who viewed uh, the person. So, uh, you know, taking the medications, they wanted to make sure that the correct patient was uh, taking that medication so that they didn't take it home. And also, um, there was a if you did take it home and maybe you decided not to take it right away, that it might buy and fall out without you know without the time frame with which you needed to take it. So that's where the um, the physician uh, watch dispense came from and the why the precautions were there. But we we really believe that pharmacists can do exactly that same.